Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are at the start of our journey asking the most important question first, which is what is the Terraform Associate? So the HashiCorp Terraform Associate is a specialty certification in Terraform, and it is an infrastructure as a code tool that is both declarative and cloud agnostic. So you might be considering getting the certification if you are seeking a DevOps engineer role, if you enjoy automating infrastructure or writing scripts, if you have knowledge uh, working with multiple cloud service providers like AWS, GCP, Azure, or you enjoy designing and iterating on end-to-end -end infrastructure life cycles. So Terraform is the third most uh, uh, cloud skill that is in demand for DevOps roles. So it goes AWS, Azure, Terraform, and Kubernetes. So Terraform is the industry standard for infrastructure as a code. I know AWS really likes uh, CloudFormation, but you know when you're using more than one provider, and most companies are, they're gonna be turning to Terraform. Uh, this is not a difficult exam. However, grasping Terraform requires a bit of patience since uh, it requires a bit of uh, 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 circular learning to fully understand certain concepts. So when I say that, it's like you'll go over something, you'll kind of get it, then you'll go put it into practice and you'll come back to the original lecture content and then it will all make sense. So you just have to kind of work through it with having partial information. It's kind of like doing math back in the day for high school. So Terraform is easy to learn, but it definitely is hard to master. So uh, just because you pass this Terraform associate doesn't mean you're an expert in it, but definitely means that you're gonna have the skills to meet the job requirements for junior DevOps roles or you know if you're upskilling, okay? So there are multiple uh, ways that we can look at this. I call it the multi-cloud roadmap because everything that HashiCorp does is all about uh, multi-cloud workloads. And a prerequisite of doing this kind of stuff is actually having base knowledge in uh, different providers. So if we're looking at certifications, you have the Google Cloud Engineer. Uh, you could have any any sort of um, AWS certification, could be the solutions architect, could be the developer, um, but generally the sysops is probably the most aligned. And then you have your Azure administrator or maybe your um, uh, Azure uh, developer, the AZ204. And then there's also Kubernetes because Kubernetes workloads can uh, come in there. So that's the CKAD. Uh, so very common is you'll pick up one or two certs in your uh, associate tier for one of the CSPs, and then you're going to move on to your Terraform associate certification. Uh, HashiCorp, uh, while I'm making this video, does not have that many certifications beyond the associate track. As you can see, they only have a single professional up here, and it's for Vault. Would they make a Terraform professional? I don't know. Um, but you know, that'd be interesting to see. If you wanted to know where to go after your associate, I would probably go uh, over to console because that is uh, like cloud networking or uh, multi-cloud networking that is agnostic. And then maybe you might want to go over to vault. Um, if you are uh, interested to go the vault route, and again, this is outside of the Terraform roadmap, but you could just take one of those associates and move to Vault and then go to the Take the Professional. If you're doing the Kubernetes uh, track, then you, you would probably want to go over to console there. But really what we're focused on here is this over here, okay? So how long does it take to pass uh, this exam? So here I have kind of a, a scale here. We're gonna look at beginner and then experience. So I, I describe a beginner as someone who's never written infrastructure as a code, uh, has not previously focused on automating infrastructure and doesn't hold an associate level certification. If this is you, you're looking at a 30 hour study time. You really should go obtain a, uh, a cloud service provider associate before you take this exam. You don't have to, uh, but it's generally recommended. For the experienced person, uh, this is someone who has written infrastructure as code. Maybe it's been cloud formation, maybe it's been ARM templates, but maybe it's just not Terraform. Uh, they are already working in a DevOps role, automating infrastructure, writing scripts, and they hold an associate level. They probably have professionals too. So they're looking at 12 hours study time, okay? So there is a, a large window of time, uh, but my recommendation is that you spread it out across 14 days, study one to two hours. Obviously, this is gonna vary based on uh, what you're doing here, uh, but that will pretty much get you there, okay? What does it take to pass this exam? Well, you're gonna to have to watch the lecture uh, materials and uh, memorize key information. You absolutely need to do hands-on labs. It's really gonna cement your knowledge here. When I made this course, I did all the lecture content first, and then when I did my follow-alongs, I just had so many misconceptions um, because the, um, the actual uh, documentation did not exactly match what was in practice. So it's very important that you do that. And I would strongly recommend some practice exams. And the great thing is I have practice exams for you on our platform. And not only that, I have a full free practice exam for, for you with 57 questions. Like that's a full set, just like the real exam. So I strongly recommend that you go redeem it. Uh, you could probably pass just with the free one, 
But, you know, if, if you want to help support the platform, then go pay to unlock all the rest of the study material content, okay? Um, in terms of the content outline, there is a lot of domains here. So we have understand infrastructure as a code, understand Terraform purpose, understand Terraform basics, use Terraform CLI, interact with Terraform modules, navigate the Terraform workflow, impl implement uh, and maintain Terraform state, regenerate, modify configuration, understand Terraform cloud enterprise capabilities. And the interesting thing is that they don't give a, uh, a distribution in terms of the weighting. So it's my assumption that, um, and when you, we look at the exam guide outline, you'll see that they'll have subdomains under each one. So I would imagine that if, you know, if there's like five questions under, or five subdomains under 1.0, then that kind of tells you the weighting for that section. Uh, but we'll talk about them when we get the exam guide because there's some interesting stuff there, okay? Where do you take the exam? Well, you can take it at an in-person test center or online from the convenience of your own home. And uh, it's only with one uh, test center, and this is with PSI. When I say test center, I mean like uh, there are a network of test centers around the world. And this is a proctored experience. So there is a supervisor who monitors students during the examination. So, uh, you know, to make sure that it's legit, okay? In terms of grading, you have to get a 70% to pass around that. Just like every other um, exam out there, it probably uses scaled scoring. So it's not always exact. If you get exactly on the dot, 70% doesn't necessarily mean you pass. So make sure you aim for 75% for your exam, okay? There are 57 questions. That affords about 17 questions that you can get wrong. There's no penalty for wrong questions. So absolutely make sure that you always take a guess. The format of the questions are multiple choice, multiple answer. And this last one's interesting, but there's fill in the blank. And this is where you type a single word answer. So they might ask you like, what is the name of the Terraform state file? And you just write in terraform.tf state. Uh, so, you know, it could be as simple as that. The duration of the exam is one hour, but that is plenty of time. You get one minute uh, per question, a little bit more than just a minute. So your exam time is 60 minutes, but your seat time is 90 minutes. Seat time is meaning that you show up uh, 30 minutes early and you make sure you're ready so you can review the instructions. Uh, if you have to work with your online proctor to make sure your workspace is secure, accept and read the NDA, uh, complete the exam, provide feedback at the end of the exam. So make sure you get pad for that time. Uh, this exam is valid for 24 months. So that means two years before uh, recertification. One little thing I want to note here is um, about Terraform version considerations. When I designed this course, it was uh, designed around the 1.0 specification of Terraform. So Terraform is always incrementing in versions. So for your studies, you may always need to look at the feature set of versions that go back three minor versions from the current stable version. So if it's 1.0, like uh, which, which the exams, at least when I sat, it wasn't even at 1.0, it was probably like 0.15 or 0.14. Uh, but my point is that I designed this kind of to be like a bit future proof. So it's this course is not going to go stale for uh, a couple of years. But I do want you to tell you that like, you know, if the exam is based around, let's say like the Terraform version that's out is 1. Uh, you know, 6. Uh, that doesn't mean it, like the exam is always a bit behind it. So, you know, the exam might be 1.0. And then that means that the content of the exam would cover these three things. Okay, so uh, throughout this course, I will cover older stuff, but I'll also cover newer stuff and I'll give more emphasis on it and you'll see me do that throughout the course, okay? So Terraform, Terraform certification is heavily dependent on practical knowledge. So as, as long as you take the time to apply the knowledge, uh, yeah, you'll have a good chance of passing regardless of the differences in versioning. And uh, more than half of this course is hands-on, okay? So the bulk of it is hands-on. Um, you could pass just doing lecture content. So like when I sat the exam, I had done a, a, like, a, like a very simple walkthrough and then I made all my lecture content and I was able to pass no problem. Uh, but again, I have a background in DevOps and I understand how this stuff works. So it was easy for me to translate that. If you are new or you're not confident, you should really do all those practice exams. So there you go. And let's take a look at the actual exam guide, okay?